Torx 20 with a hole in the middle of it. If I go ahead and take this off, be careful when you pull it out. It's got to twist a little and it's a little O-ring down there. If we don't have issues, don't even clean it. Put it in a bag and just, it'll go right back in the truck, wipe around the O-ring, but I want to be careful because it heats that element up. And you say mass airflow cleaner. I mean, I've probably, I could count on one hand how many times I've fixed the truck by replacing the mass airflow sensor, right? Mm -hmm. This is a very, very resilient part. If somebody tells you your mass airflow sensor, it's not out of the question, but uh, my ears perk up definitely when somebody says, oh no, I are having my mass airflow sensor replaced. Most of the time, that's not it. And this is just what we do. Now I'm going, if you want to do what we do, we'll have to back those bolts. I use the ultrasonic cleaner. Watch how these come out. I'll just put them in here while I'm doing the job. Not everybody's going to have one. I get it. But it's worth it when it's over for it to be all clean and this isn't quite heated up all the way. Heck, I think it's Sunday, isn't it? When we clean the valve cover gasket and the valve cover, like I'll run it with the valve cover gasket on top of the of it in the spray cabinet. Now, I get it, most of you don't have a spray cabinet. Now you can throw it right there, it doesn't line up, and throw it there for a couple of minutes, but normally just one way cleans it. And remember, we're talking about that hot water from the hose running up out of your water heater. Now I find a flat service. Now we built this place to accustom what we want to do. This is all epoxy here. This is all waterproof. So not real hard. I put it on the wall. Spray around it. Now is where we pay attention. Don't sit there and aimlessly spray for 15 freaking minutes. You're just going to waste resources. Look at what you're spraying. If you see any dirty spots, keep going now. I'll do the same thing. I mean, I always have air right there. We don't, it doesn't have to be completely dry. All I really want to do is have it dry enough so I can see it. Now we look in here. It's dark. We didn't turn the lights on yet. Look in here. It's perfect. I mean, it actually does look perfect. The longer you cook it, the more it'll actually take the paint off. Now, watch a little rubber grommet on O3s. O3s have got this. Now, a lot of times it, yeah, a lot of times it falls out. So, just want to graze over it and focus hitting it down there because that's there's always a lot of crap down there on the bottom. You can hit that as hard as you possibly want. See, this one will qualify to go ahead and refresh this valve cover, throw, smooth that out a little bit, probably on the wire wheel. Then we'll go around the back side too. We'll go around the back side and I'll clean that. Man, I don't know. Well, right here. You'll see what we do. That looks pretty good actually. Not too bad. Yeah. On these pots, we just want to scuff it a little. I just want to scuff it, right? Scuff so that you can't feel the paint lines. That way when we paint it, the idea is that we're going to end that line, right? And you won't even be able to tell. Little stuff like that rust spot. See how easy that comes off? We use the holy heck out of that. I mean, this is, this is used probably more than any tool in the freaking shop. Yeah, we go through a lot of wheels, a lot of wheels. <laughs> Normally I'll have a brass and a steel one because the brass does really good on aluminum. I, I don't even have the other valve cover off, but this one is sitting on the table and it needs to be cleaned anyway, so let's just, every second we can use, clean them as you go. There's always a lip along the top and that gets rusted pretty bad. And I want to get that caked with paint. See it just a little bit? I'm not trying to take it down to bare metal. I don't want to. All I want to do is take the paint that will come off. So I lightly graze it. Watch, I'm just barely touching it. And watch, you'll see how some of the paint just falls off because it was about to peel off anyways. See that? This also gives you a really good time. Look, this one looks wonderful. But you might find on some of yours that from the grommet and the, the barrel on the valve cover bolt, will actually dent this and you'll have dents. So I use the wire brush on a lot of them because it knocks the sharp edges off of all the dents. If it's bad enough, I will try to bend it back, but I hate doing that because I mean, it's 
I just hate doing it. So I just lightly graze over it with it, and it will knock off any light, any high spots on that that potentially when you're setting the valve cover gasket down, if you was to set it down and you fumble it a little bit, now you got sharp edges that are just gonna try to cut the valve cover gasket. So use this and graze over it. Yeah. And usually while Anthony's cleaning the big cars, I'll clean the nuts and bolts. Run them through the spray cabinet for just a quick second. On these, I always remove the rubber grommets. I don't wanna tear anything up. They're not too bad to get off. Touch them with the grinder. We do paint them, so I'm gonna get on that come over here and any paints better than no paint so you know but what we're using is two times paint that stuff is I found it to be most cost cost efficient and yeah I do have masks and stuff but it's just a real quick now that this mating surface this is important quick swipe and then stop for a second let it tack up how many people are gonna say, oh, that paint inside that valve cover is gonna flake off and get in the engine? I mean, possibly, possibly, I doubt it. Light swipes. Let that sit for a little bit. When it's done, that light coat, then we'll put another one on it and then let it hang just like that. Yeah, it takes a while, it takes longer, but when we take this down and I go to put it on there, this paint on this mating surface, it needs to dry for at least a day because otherwise when you put the gasket on, you'll know you put it on too early if you put the gasket on and it leaves lines in the paint, which I've also thought about. Maybe the lines in the paint might help us seal more, but I don't want to do that. We'll, we'll keep a You want to nice... seal with the gasket, not with the paint. Yeah, yeah, because Ford does that. Ford will paint the whole engine black and you know that helps with leaks because they cake it on so much right here in the little joint, they'll just cake black paint on it. I mean, it might seal because of it. See, we haven't even taken the other valve cover off yet, but that one is already drying and, and paint because the paint needs to dry. So as soon as you get something off that actually does need to dry, hurry up and get it done as fast as possible because nothing is worse than waiting on paint to dry. Oh, that sucks. Remember, these were the thickum bolts and one of them was missing. So we have a whole boneyard and yes, I spent a lot of time organizing this. So I come over here and I find my my other thickum bolt. You do not need to take the valve cover off during an intake or if you do anything oil cooler wise on an 03, you do not need to pop the valve covers off. This little tool right here, I don't even know what size this is. This is one of the tools you can buy. It has the other one on the other side. You can buy these online, but I remember cutting this one. It's been a minute. Above the rubber. See that above it right there put it in and just wiggle it around a little bit and then it should just pull right off just like that this one here on 03s is below the rubber and that one over there is above the rubber now and you can decide whether or not you want to yank that valve cover off and this valve cover at the same time because it would apply when you're using the tin over here to get the thickum bracket and all that stuff off. You go over there and get the glow plug bracket off. But for the video, I wanted to focus on one side and now we'll go over and focus on the other side because I didn't want to bounce back and forth. So we'll leave this right here. Now we'll take 10 Milwaukee and go over to the all other right, side. Now, sometimes the glow plug nuts are pretty hard. Just impact them off. A lot of times you'll get burnt by trying to impact them off. Sometimes you won't get it slammed on all the way. Un unbolt the glow plug control module, and then this little tab, same thing applies to the Fickham. Every harness you ever do, push them in, and then push right here, and you'll, you should hear it click, but mm, I guess not always. And then just lightly wiggle it, okay? This is pretty trivial. Nope, I didn't hear either one of them click. This is an 03. The, I'm gonna have to do a different one the 04 and up has a different glow plug bracket. The wire is routed different. We can, for 03 right here, if you look at this, it goes under here, under the bracket, and it comes out the bottom right here. That's how it goes. I can't tell you how many times I've seen that routed wrong. They run it all over the place. That actually does go underneath that bracket. See, so you can move it. It does cut into it, uh, but it... Yeah, I have had the mentality before of a truck has its day. 
now that we can't leave that like that, but normally, like say a truck's been in bay one and we don't do injectors, we go back in later for injectors. I normally will not repaint anything that was colored. I mean, this was five years ago. The paint's all falling off. See, they, what's the phrase? There's no warranty on paint. Yeah, that's why, because this was four years later and it's peeling off and it kind of looks like crap. So, I know a lot of people will have 4,000 opinions on paint. Oh, we gotta use this paint, we gotta use that paint. Oh, this paint has chemical uh, something, something, blah, blah, blah. I don't understand all. Uh, any paint's better than no paint. That's my opinion on it, so. Yeah. I mean, on a lot of these connections, just spray them down before you even try to touch them. Put a towel over it and then just wipe it down. At least we can try, because this thing was covered with nasty crap. And if you really want to get thorough, you'll take a blow gun before you even try to take it apart and blow all the brake clean out, and it'll just, it'll look, it'll look brand new when you're messing with it. You can just push the tab in, I get it, you can. Pull it backwards and then push it and, it, and it goes in and there's really even no click. That is disconnected, that is ready to go. Now you can push the little tab right here and pull it apart. Okay, this will apply to O3 and any other ICP harnesses. If you take, you can clean out O3 ICP harness. You don't have to replace the pigtail just because it has oil on it on an ICP harness. You can throw some brake clean in it and blow it out. Close your eyes. Do that a couple of times like that and you will have this harness looking brand new. So, and I'm not necessarily for glow plugs, but that's for ICP because more ICP pigtails get replaced just because they're covered with oil and that's, that's ridiculous. Just because it's wet is no means to replace the pigtail unless there's damage done from the oil. All right, I have this tool that Mark HHC's, HHC Diesel made. It's, I don't really want to sell it. <laughs> He's got the angle just right. It's a half inch drive on the tensioner, okay? There's a hole down there on the end and if you, oh, the battery's dead. If you line it up just right, it'll go in. Did you catch it? Yeah. Right there, you see it? If, if you got your bracket just right, it'll go. Now, on the side, under here, you see my finger? Nope. Right there, yep. Now, pull the bar and lock the tensioner up and it stays open. Now that right there is why I don't like O'Reilly's tensioners. Four tensioners are the only one that has a kickstand that I found. So I pull the belt off and then we'll take a 10 and a 13. You will break that plastic, watch. That little tab just, I got all these lights in the way. If I could do it without trying to show you, it'd be nothing. Right there, do you feel that click? Do you hear it? And then it comes right out. Right there. All right, now just bang the 13s off. I'll go ahead and break them loose first. Yep, I get it. All right, well, get the alternator off. You don't have to, you don't. But it sure does let you see and it lets you very easily get to that number one injector harness. Okay, so Anthony is grabbing a few parts out. We're cleaning up. Most of it's coming clean. This is messed up. I'll have to talk to the customer about how to fix that, what we need to do. Um, that, that came pretty clean. We'll wipe it down a little better. And it didn't hurt the kicker too bad. All right, this is what I was talking about on the pack too when it stuck to it. You got a little bit of the rubber stuck to it. Now when we polish this, got a little right there. Actually, that's smooth. You could go like, a fraction of an inch past that, but I leave all this exactly how it is. I, when I say polish, it's not polish. We wire brush it. We just, it's not polished. It's not gonna be like mirror finish, no. My hands are still a little wet. We gotta go full swipes and it's, it's tricky to make it look good because when it's on the truck, it's like this. So you can really see this. So I want this done, but this up here, let's see if we can do it. So maybe it does take about nine minutes. It'll take longer than nine minutes. I was, I was being optimistic. So he'll clean on that and we'll keep telling you what we're doing. Yeah, that's good. 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 Yeah, that
Now the trick is to get it to turn the corner. We'll go through here and knock it all off and get it to where it's kind of uniform like that. And then I'll have to go down and take, and take the green with the whole thing. We'll see. It's I like doing this. It's a pain in the freaking butt. And no two will ever look the same. But it looks good, guys. And then we'll clear coat it. Just clear coat right over the top of it. And then it doesn't get chalky. And in theory, it should stay like that. So before, obviously in 2017, this got painted gray, silver, to try to look like it. And we... Don't I guess tried anymore. to cheap out back then and what it was a it was a noble thought because if the gray paint flakes off it still is gray underneath it so that was my thought process back then but now I think I just want to go ahead and make it look good and then clear coat it and it'll look good for long long time so on the glow plug bracket we decided to go ahead and clean it up I do tape off the sticker and tape off the studs here I didn't tape these Anthony and I kind of go back and forth on whether or not to tape the valve cover bolts. Um, sometimes we do, sometimes we don't. Sometimes it depends which one of us is painting. I didn't do it, but then again, I don't overwhelm it with paint. Of course, if you're painting it on too thick, you can always touch that back up with the little end of the grinder. Let's go check on it. Okay, so he's still at it. Go clean it up. Okay, this is just about dry. Mating surface around it. Now, I still do not want to set it on there. It's not exactly perfect, but it's, it's pretty good. Now, I'd like to prop this up so the crankcase breather box can be down like that. <laughs> yeah. So prop it up somewhere where you're not going to set it on the mating surface because that paint still is not cured. Normally, I'll prop it up in the bed of the truck or something and figure out how to angle it up like that. That way, the crankcase breather can drain. Propped it up like this. Just a little bit of an angle. Okay, I pretty much hosed Elliot back in 2017 from ever having one that actually would be how I would want it to look by putting paint on it, so don't paint it. It's a pain in the butt to get it off and make it look good, but that's going to be good enough. I'm not even going to show you. Quit looking at it. You can see it when it's on the truck. Sometimes this... Okay, post fires. Let's just set this here. Oh, yeah. Yeah, in the cab lift video, I took this off and it came off real easy. Now, this one is an 03. If you look down here, you can see that bolt broken off right there. The head is broke off the heater core tube. I'm pretty sure I remember that. I have I have destroyed front covers before on 03s, and, and I don't. It's just 03s mainly. The rest of them we normally can get out. I have destroyed entire front covers trying to take these out, so obviously what I see right here is when we did that, that bolt, I mean it's got red paint over the broken part of the bolt, so we obviously just kind of ghetto rigged and threw some paint on this tube while it was on the truck, because that, if you got an 03, you might want to consider leaving this alone unless you're willing to go down and actually do some work on the front cover. So for this hose, these are the ones that always tear a hole in this hose. I mean, uh, they do. They just always tear a hole in it. Let's see which way I can get on it without, hopefully without tearing a hole in it. Just wiggle it. It's trying. It still ain't there. If we're gonna do this, it wouldn't be bad to rip through it on, at the beginning. Come on, come on. Wiggle it side to side until you hear it crack. And once you hear it crack, you just grab it right here and put a finger on the bottom and a finger on the top and just pull it. See that, see how it moves? And this one's nasty, it's, it's pain in the butt. Okay, now we just take the shot back. Very carefully, there's always gonna be some. Look all that good. Okay, heater control valve. This can go right there. But it'll be in the way for the injector job, but if you ever take it off, put it right there. Okay, don't forget, I'll go ahead and take these, take these clamps off. Get them out of the way, we'll move that in a second. And then push this, this will kind of wedge up here around the turbo and it's away from everything. Just, it can just sit like that. Map sensor, actually just a map hose. 
If you use needle nose vice grips and close them up all the way, just barely, just spin them until they won't spin no more, then you can just pop the hose off. This one, I don't worry about taking the clamp off. And most of the time, the clamp on the top up here is backwards. I think they do that just to mess with you. It's fine. It's fine. Just, I've already shown you how to take this off. Just be careful. Let's see if I buy a map sensor. Got one without breaking another one. It doesn't happen, and sometimes you break them. Okay, now right here, map hose is off. Okay, we have the glow plug bracket. Remember, we, we cleaned that a little bit. The battery's already disconnected. Now, we can take this leg of the harness, and just like we did on the main engine harness side, just take it and just kind of wedge it in there wherever it likes to lay at. Let it relax. We don't have to like tell it it has to go, <laughs> right? That'll be fine, because we're not taking the heater core tube off. Transmission dipstick. You guys do have an ultrasonic cleaner. It will make these look brand new. If you take it and wrap it twice, look at that, it holds it. Wrap and it won't it. hit you in the face. Yeah. Now we have a transmission dipstick set up. Remember on a lot of these, I didn't do it earlier, but on a, it's never a bad thing to go ahead and spray the studs down. I didn't do it, I just pulled the glow plug control module off. But spray them down a little bit. That's gonna help you. All right, this works for just about all of the transmission dipstick, the 10 millimeters. I put a 10 deep well with a quarter inch drive knuckle with a foot long, adapt it to three H drive, hit that sucker right on the Milwaukee. And most of the time you can go right here and just, just bang it right off. Okay, that pretty, that works. I mean, you can do a gear wrench, you can do all kinds of stuff, but that, that works really good. Now for the transmission dipstick, we're gonna pull it out of the transmission. Take the dipstick out and put it all the way back in from up here and hit the transmission. If you can do that, send me a video of it. I mean, I'll give you a job. Because <laughs> I've, I think I've done it once. No, I, I don't know if I've ever done it. I don't know, but just to be able to hit this right here and to go right into the transmission and get it in the hole of the transmission and on the stud at the same time without having to go underneath it. If you can do that, then, then you deserve every dollar you make.